Hey everyone, today on the tools we use, we're gonna be talking about a plethora of tools. So this is gonna be a multi-part series within the tools we use series about a group of Windows related tools known as Sys internals. So stay with us. Okay, so Sys internals was a website created in 1986 by Mark Roshinovich to host his advanced system utilities and technical information. Whether you're an IT pro or a developer, you'll find Sys internals utilities to help you manage, troubleshoot, and diagnose your Windows and Linux system applications. I didn't know it did Linux too, very cool. Um, I will be putting the link to the learn.microsoft page where Sys internals is. Apparently what happened is they wrote these really cool set of tools and then Microsoft, I guess, basically just offered them a job. All right, so as you can see, there are a ton of different tools in here. I'm just gonna kind of scroll a little bit and you'll see how quickly it lags up because there's just so much in here. So we're gonna separate it based off of the separations that the Sys internals website at Microsoft has laid out. So we'll start with file and disk utilities and that will probably be enough for this video. So the first one we're gonna check out is access check. This tool apparently shows you the accesses this tool shows you the accesses the user or group you specify has to files, registry keys, or Windows services. So let's check it out. Now, I don't know how many of these are gonna work and how many aren't. Apparently that one has to be run in a command line. What do we get? Okay, we have to build flags in, so no big deal. So do, 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 do. What's the simplest one we can do here? My goodness. Looks like dash A. Does that work? Error opening LSA policy database access denied. So this needs to be a command window. So we'll move on to the next one anyway. Access enumeration. This simple yet powerful security tool shows you who has what access to directories, files, and registry keys in your system. Use it to find holes in your permissions. So it's basically the same thing. And this one actually looks like a GUI. Yeah. So let's see, scan. And there we go. Now we can see on this system, the users that have access to see windows and things, so administrators basically. Um, very cool. That is very neat. Let's see what's next. Cache set. Cache set is a program that allows you to control the cache manager's working set size using functions provided by NT. It's compatible with all versions of NT. Let's see if we can find a cache set. Oh, here it is. So this is telling me the current size of the cache and this is the peak size and I can adjust it here. That's pretty cool. Don't think I'd ever use it, but it's neat to have. Contig. Wish you could quickly defragment your frequently used files. Use Contig to optimize individual files or create new files that are continuous. We're not gonna run that one. We don't need to defrag. This is D's, we're fine. Disk to VHD. Disk to VHD simplifies the migration of physical systems to, okay, so this one right here is a P to V system. So we can't really use this one here, but we can take a look at what it looks like. Yeah, okay, so it can see this system. And then I can hit create and it will make a VHD file that we could use for Hyper-V. Very cool. All right, um, disk extension displays volume disk mappings. We don't have any, so this probably won't show anything. We could run it, but I bet it's gonna pop out. Yeah. Uh, Diskmon, this utility caches all hard disk activity or acts like a software disk activity light in your system tray. I don't think I really want a software. Oh my goodness. Run as administrator. Yeah, so there it goes. Showing reads and writes on the disk right now. For somebody that might be pretty awesome. I, I don't think I'll use it. Uh, disk view, graphical disk sector utility. So let's check this one out. Uh, let's hit refresh. This might take a second. Oh my goodness. 
So it's scanning the volume, kind of showing how it's breaking down. We can scroll through it and kind of... Huh, okay. Go back up here. And then it looks like we can zoom in. You can see every little... This is actually the old way of looking at, like, a disk defragmenters. They would move all these little blocks around for you and organize your disks. That's pretty cool. Um, those red dots usually mean bad sectors, which I guess is possible. Very interesting. Okay, we'll put that one because we don't need to see that set there. Disk usage. So that's just like du-h it looks like, but for Windows, I guess. Um, pretty simple command in Linux, just type du-h and it gives you a human readable size chart of all your drives, which honestly, boom, we got that right there. <laughs> um, EFS dump, view information on encrypted files. We don't have any encrypted files, uh, so that's not gonna work. Find links. Find links reports the file index and any hard links, alternate file paths in the same volume that exists for a specified file. We don't have any links, so find links is not going to work for us here. Junction. Create Win2K NTFS symbolic links. Wow, this is lazy. So, you shouldn't need this type of program for this, but basically a symbolic link lets you take a folder or file that's in one directory and make a link to it in another directory that other users can access. That way they don't have to go to the long path to where the real file is. Pretty handy, but I wouldn't use this to do it. <laughs> LDM dump. Dump the contents of the logical disk managers on disk database, which describes the partitioning of Windows 2000 dynamic disks. I don't think that will work for us because this isn't a Windows 2000 box. Uh, move file. Schedule file rename and delete commands for the next reboot. This can be useful for cleaning stubborn or in-use malware files. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Move file. Yeah, it's going to be command line based, so you're going to need to know what you're looking to move. Uh, we don't have anything to move because this is a clean system. NTFS info. Use NTFS info to see detailed information about NTFS volumes, including the size and location of the master file table and MFT zone. Let's take a look at this. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, it's command line base. It's going to complain again. That's just going to go and then close. I hate that. There used to be run. Am I insane? <laughs> I'll open a PowerShell window here, but that's not going to give me a administrative PowerShell. Which is silly, but you have to run it as administrator, even though you are the administrator. Maybe, uh, what's this? Oh, downloads. This internal suite. All right, we want to check out NTFS info. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, we got to give it a drive letter. C. So there we go. This is the NTFS info for the C drive. Let me get this bigger for you so you can kind of see it. There we go. So there's the volume size, the sectors, the clusters, the free clusters, the free space. Bytes per cl sector, bytes per cluster, and then how big the MFT um, size is and where it is on the drive. There you go. Pretty, pretty basic info. Pend moves. See what files are scheduled for delete or rename the next time system boots. We don't have any of that, so. <laughs> process monitor, monitor file system registry process, threads and deal activity in real time. Now that one sounds pretty cool. But they don't list the command name. And by the way, you can download these different files separately if you want to. Let's process 
Proxmos monitor not included? Maybe it's Procmon. Yeah, it's Procmon. All right, let's take a look here. So this is, oh, this is one of the cool ones that I got shown the other day. It's getting there, it's getting there. It's pretty bad when your Windows VM can't handle it. So here's your process, the PID number, the operation of what it's doing, a read file, and what DLL it was using, and if it succeeded. So this is really neat, and I'm pretty sure you can like click on these and you know look at properties on them. Get a lot of a lot of good info, a lot better than just task manager and stuff like that. Um, I highly recommend poking around in this file. There's some registry key stuff. Um, a lot of things going on with Explorer.exe. Very cool. And then you know it's a pretty big list, so all that stuff's happened or happening. PS files. See what files are remote opened remotely. We don't have any files open remotely. There's no shares or anything. PS tools. The PS tools suites include command line utilities for listing the processes running on local remote computers, running processes remotely, rebooting computers, dumping event logs. So basically, PS tools allows you to do a lot of stuff PowerShell lets you do. So that's pretty cool. Uh, S delete. Securely overwrite your sensitive files and cleanse your free space of previously deleted files using DoD compliant secure delete program. I'm not going to run that. Um, but <laughs> that's what that one will do. Uh, share enum. Scan file shares in your network and view their security systems to close security holes. Again, we don't have any file shares, so this won't help us. We can't take a look at this. Sig check. Dunk var file version information and verify that images on your system are digitally signed. Hmm, that's kind of neat. I don't think there's any images on this, but sig check will check for it. Streams, reveal NTFS alternate streams. No idea what that would do. Sync flush cache data to disk. We don't need to do that. Volume ID, set volume ID of fat or NTFS drives. So, not a whole lot that we can work with on our system because of no shares, not a lot of users. But now you have a quick rundown of all these tools. And again, link in the description below so you'll know exactly how to get them and use them on your systems. All right, and that's it for this episode of the tools we use. This is the first part of the Sys internals grouping. Uh, we'll cover in the next video, it looks like networking utilities. So stay tuned for that one next week. And until then, we'll see you in the next one.